Hey y'all, it's raining here in Nashville and I am avoiding working on butter for the moment. Um, I got out this, well, it's kind of a long story as everything is with me. I got out this box of photos, um, which I knew was just like sort of loose photos and just all these random photos that weren't like necessarily top, top notch or like my most memorable like photos. I'm not saying photos because I'm Donald Trump through and through. Don't tell anyone. Um, but in that process, I found these photos of, um, because my friend Amanda worked, well, I shouldn't say her name. It doesn't matter. I have 27 friends named Amanda. You will never figure out which one. Used to work at the Decatur County News Leader, my hometown newspaper. I ended up with a lot of these really random photos, like, announcing things like announcing births and they're in my Barbie uh, box here. So I'm now going to start treating that like art supplies, like ephemera, and I'm going to cut it up. Like welcome Alita. This child's like probably a million years old now. Look, I don't know who this is, but they're very happy with their car. And look, this is a natural queen. Anyway, also you can just get photos like this of people you don't know at like Turnip Green. They sell them. Um, so that's not the point of the story, but what's really cool about it is I did find some photos that I thought like, you know, they're just like photos I had printed that were like doubles. I have a million of them. Um, so now I'm just going to like cut them up and use them in things. Um, oddly enough, I found pictures of my favorite teachers, like these really nice, you know, like this was going to the newspaper. So I feel like I kind of should mail it to them. I'm not going to cut these up. Um, in my Barbie box, I found. So, my high school is remarkable in that, well, it, okay, so Decatur County is just so steeped in, like, misogyny, uh, masculine culture. That's what gets me so, like, mad about um, Mark's dad being, like, you know, he's so rigid about gender, like, masculinity is this one thing, but, like, the way that he expresses masculinity, like, he wouldn't even be considered masculine by men in Decatur County. Um, it's just a whole other thing, but like, it was just a supercharged masculine environment, which really caused me to be non-binary because I saw that to be masculine was to have power. And I, you can just like see it. And like, I wrote my first paper on gender roles. I probably told you about that. That's not important. Um, anyway, it's just a very, um, you know, I grew up with my mom. With, I was always the person in my family who called the cops on my dad for domestic violence. And that was kind of even a joke because, you know, I think Heather, my sister, was just so desensitized to it. She was just like, whatever. And the cops, I mean, she was right because the cops never did anything. And, um, you know, they always said that they couldn't do anything because they didn't see it happen. Even if they, if they saw the evidence that something had happened. Um, and even just a few years ago, it, it was actually like 2019, but in my mind, like, because it was such a, like, it was a seriously re-traumatizing event that I experienced, um, in 2019, uh, with my parents where the cops came and I'm going to write about it one day, but like, they eventually wanted me to do their job for them. They wanted me to communicate with my dad, Freddie and tell him he had to leave the house. Anyway, we're, we're, but like, the thing is, they, they don't, it's not a, it's not a good place to be a woman. And, uh, so the, there are, there's this thing that happened in 2011, Holly Bobo, uh, went missing. She was from my hometown. Her mom was my fifth grade math teacher. Um, other than that, you know, I didn't, I didn't know her. I didn't really particularly know the Bobo family. However, I did date very briefly this person Zach Adams he was two years um like he was a sophomore and I was a senior and I was kind of just like playing um I had a very interesting approach to romantic relationships like when I was in high school I was very um I was very Baptist so I definitely was not trying to have sex with anybody I was not trying to be serious with anyone but I also knew I wanted to leave Decatur County so I didn't want to like become attached to anyone so I didn't really take relationships very seriously. I just thought, I literally thought he smelled good. He was so quiet. I don't remember him saying anything. And I think that's because I probably talked the whole time. He, um, was just like a really quiet guy. I met his parents. Um, 
which his mom like later when he was on trial anyway she was we were we were messaging and uh he wrote me a letter too i should share that uh because it's it's funny as hell um after i sent his mom some butter a couple of years ago several years ago because he the trial was only a couple of years ago because they found her body. Anyway, they convicted him of mu of murdering Holly Bobo. And she was like, you know, at the time, 10 years ago, you know, that story was everywhere. She was missing white girl. I wanted to write a screenplay about it because I really believe that Zach Adams was not, well, they definitely, it, I watched the trial, like from cover to cover, like gavel to gavel, watched the trial. And I did not see enough evidence to prove him guilty, but I, I, I don't know. I really don't want to get emotionally invested in it because I just feel like it is, so much like um, a story about like um, just like methamphetamine effects on people um, and how they change people. He, if, if, if he was on drugs the very short amount of time I dated him, which like this picture is taken in the hallway at school. Like our entire relationship was talking on the phone, talking during 10 minute break uh, in the hallway, me talking at him probably, right? And then, um, you know, like one time we went riding around town and I went to pick him up and met his parents at the river. And then <laughs> he mentions that in the letter he wrote. It's funny, I have to find it. I can find it very easily. But, because I keep everything. But here's what. So here's what I'm doing. I'm, I'm going to use this stuff for like art fodder, not particularly Zach Adams' photo. But um, I'm going to just cut all this stuff up that way. I, it's like, I don't have to throw it away. And I don't know what else to do with it because like there's no other reason to keep any of it. Um, but I want to bring your attention to this photo, which was also in my Barbie box and this person in particular, I want you, when you go away from this conversation to only think nice things about this person with the tall hair and the tall ice cream cone. This picture was taken of these two nice young men who were also in the same grade as Zach Adams, two years younger than me. And this is my, uh, convertible Mustang at the dairy bar where this ice cream comes from and I was taking their picture from inside the car. Uh, this person is Jim Davis, not the Jim Davis that created Garfield, but uh, the Jim Davis that I had a crush on when I was when I was in high school. Kind of a weird thing too because it wasn't even really a crush. I just had like kind of this mutual admiration for his like artistic expression in ways. Um, just, you know, uh, I was very... You know, it was my senior year, so I was, like, getting ready to literally move. So, I was just, like, really, I had, I took, I mean, I started kind of doing arts and crafts projects in my, uh, whatever my math class that I was in, because I was just, like, I'm, I'm done. Anyway, uh, what I want to tell you about, this is Brad Dawson. He recently was arrested for banging his wife's head against uh, a toilet in, like, a, $3,500 a night resort when they were on their honeymoon six months after they got married. They lived in Memphis. Um, I just think it's kind of wild. Like, I mean, these are two people that I have pictures of. They graduated in the same cl graduating class, and I just have pictures of them in my personal effects. Um, but, like, it's still happening. Like, there's recently, in the last year or so, the this really just terribly infuriating case where it's just so evident how much and how little um, Decatur County law enforcement cares about women or Henderson County or whoever whoever the story um, I'm, about, I'm about to tell you affects. Um, anyway, a person I graduated with, their nephew um, and his girlfriend and their like infant child were riding around because it still happens and he said that she committed suicide while they were together. He picked up her body, put it in his truck, and drove to his parents' house with it. It was so evident, just from like everything that was just known about what happened, that he was guilty, that he had killed her, and then tried to make it look like she killed herself. But you know, that story about crazy women, it gets a lot of currency. Like, you just call us hysterical. You just, you know, I don't know. I don't know what was happening, right? But uh, it took them a year to finally gather enough evidence to arrest him. And in that time, he had gone down to, like, Gulf Shores and impregnated another person and had started a whole other family down there. 
And then they revealed that they had known pretty much, I mean, from the beginning of the investigation that the gunshot was like from the back of the head. So like, there's really no way she could have killed herself, but they had to get all their other little ducks in a row. I get it, I understand it, but also like, um, I know other families who've been treated differently. Anyway, um, it's just, it's, yeah, it's, it's funny. And when I told Mark about that, like, okay, so like living with a lawyer, like, and he, he denies this now, but I swear to you, he's like, oh, it's not that remarkable. That like, yeah, yeah, it's fucking remarkable. Um, so I, uh, got out this Barbie notebook, which was one of my journals and just like, uh, all around little notebooks where I wrote like boys phone numbers and a list of feel good songs and, um, posters I need for my dorm room and a lot of song lists, things like that. But the most important thing in here, and I'm glad I got it out because I have to update it. Um, very important life events. Uh, my Barbie notebook has my, my list of people who I have kissed on the mouth. And <laughs> I'm glad I found it. I mean, some of these people I do not remember. Uh, what I love about this is the annotations. Uh, there are several he made me. Uh, I won't, I didn't spell out mouth rape here, but yeah. And this number 16 made me, he tried, he, he made me kiss him. This was after I had spit in his face in anger. funny um it'll never be funny to anyone but me but you're watching a 12 minute video of me talking to a camera um and pronouncing words in just these really funny weird ways but i love that i have recorded i do have two women on this list and <laughs> people who came back around it's just like the annotations on this i'm gonna take a picture and post it but I have to update it. So, you'll see it maybe, or maybe I'll post the update. I don't know. Anyway, I love you. I don't know what you're doing watching this, but it maybe you just like to hear me talk. Uh, that's what I hear kind of here and there from people who say they watch this, but who knows if they do. Or they don't. I don't care. It's, um, it's, it's I'm not paying for therapy right now, so thank you.